Hey, good morning guys, I'm the Tech Prepper. Hope you're all doing well. Today we're gonna to do a fun video. We're gonna do a man pack build. I haven't done one of these in a while. And we're gonna use the Zygu G90. Now, this is not my radio. I have no experience with it. I haven't even turned it on. About the only thing that I've done is make my own manual for it, uh, printed this out. And uh, the goal is actually to set this radio up for the guys over at T-Rex Arms in preparation for our targeted contact, or what I like to call no random contacts. So it should be fun. We're going to compare it against my actual man pack build that I've been using for now a couple years. And we're also going to take a look at all of the components that I actually use for this build. Now, I'm not endorsing the G90. There are some issues we'll talk about in a second. But the goal of this video is to walk you through how I approach new projects and that's why this video is coming ahead of the how to write a comps plan episode because I have to tackle this project now and I just want to share with you the build. So this is going to be very new for me as well and there might be some curveballs. Stick around. All right, folks, like I said, I am brand new to the Zygu G90. And again, this radio probably isn't for me, but I'm looking forward to at least using it for the next two or three weeks while I set this up for the guys over at T-Rex Arms. So some of the highlights of this radio, based on what I've been reading in the manual, is that this is a 20-watt HF-only rig. 20 watts is actually perfect for the type of operation we want to do, which is a short targeted comma window with enough power to achieve that long range communication. Again, we're setting out to do a 1500 mile contact. The analysis shows that we might not be able to do voice, but we'll see. It'll be nice to have the, the 20 watts at our disposal. Now this unit is a little bit larger than I thought it was gonna be. I thought it at first might fit into my smaller man pack, but uh, you'll notice, for example, they've got this guards here at the bottom but all of the connectors are almost flush with it. So there's no room for a bend radius to accommodate the cables. So this is actually gonna be up at a higher position, which will roughly put it on the order of the same size as my Yesu 857D man pack. It's unfortunate I'm no longer able to make these bags, but before I designed this bag, uh, it was inspired by the PRC 117 golf pouch, which is readily available in fact. All of the components I'm going to show you today are all readily available. So this is the one man pack you can build and I encourage you guys not to run out and get all of those components because I can't endorse anything I have not used. But the components in general are what I have used on every other man pack. But in terms of the man pack operation and the G90, that is something that I can't speak to. But step one is to build the man pack so that we can gain that experience. Oh. Other features are the built-in ATU, the antenna tuner, which is nice to have. I personally don't run antenna tuners. I like resonant antennas that don't require it. And it also has a waterfall. Again, nice to have, but I also don't use it. So with that said, let's jump into some of the components we'll be using for this build. All right, folks, so we have quite a few components on the table, and I'm gonna warn you right now, this is not going to be cheap. We'll run the numbers here in a bit. So at the core, we've got the Zygu G90. This is just the bare radio. We're going to affix on either side the ArmorLock TPA pack frames. And as you can see here, this is why we're going to need a larger bag. And the reason for it is so that we can accommodate all of the hardware on the bottom of the radio so that nothing is damaged, including the connectors. So TPA pack frames will be on both sides here. Since we have an SO239 antenna connector, I have standardized on these PL259 to right angle B and C connectors. And then off of that, we're gonna run a 12 inch MPD cable. This is the exact cable that I use to go from the bottom of the radio and relocate it to the top. So I haven't decided where we're going to mount it on the M-Lock hardware, but again, part of the kit you get with Armor Lock, if you get the RF package, uh, is these relocation brackets, and these allow you to have access to the antenna from the top of the unit. I also like to include a dust cap, and I'll have links below to everything uh, regardless of where it's sourced. The other thing we have at the bottom here, this is the factory cable for power, and we're going to have to modify this. So I'm going to cut this down and put Anderson power poles on it. So uh, we're going to relocate it basically to probably somewhere along here. And again, this is the ArmorLock M-App, and this allows us to put the Anderson power pole on this side and then made it with another end. So I've done a video that I'll link up here on how I like to size my batteries. I'm a big fan of the BioWino uh, batteries. These are lithium iron phosphate batteries and they come in various sizes. I have personally used the three amp hour, the 4.5, the six, 
the 9, and the 12. Uh, this is a 9 amp hour battery. This one actually is sized a bit larger than we need. Uh, the one I'll be sending Isaac is a new 6 amp hour battery. And just to show you guys the math, this is a copy of the manual. And what you want to look for in your manual when sizing these rigs is what is the current consumption for transmit. So since this is a 20 watt rig, it says the max is 6 amps, but in other places in the manual they say it might be 8 amps, and then I've even seen a reference to 10 amps. So we'll use 10 as that ceiling, and in the case of the 9 amp hour battery, you can see that the max discharge rate is 18 amps, so way more than we need. Uh, the 6 amp version, which he will be getting, has a max continuous discharge of 12 amps, so that'll be perfect. All right, since we're primarily going to be doing digital mode communication, since it's going to be the most efficient with this system, we're going to be using the DigiRig Mobile. I have put this on every ManPak build. I purchased two of the cables from DigiRig for the G90. This will give us the ability to do CAT control. So we can control uh, the frequency from software and the computer. And then we also have the audio interface so we can get sound out or uh, in and out of the rig. And then in terms of the interface to the computer, I like to use these uh, cable creation USB cables. I use them on all my rigs. Uh, the only two modifications I make is I do add ferrite beads to both sides to reduce RFI or EMI, and also a dust cap cover, which I don't have for this rig. I need to order some more. And then going back to armor lock, the way we're going to mount this onto the frame is using the armor or the digi rig mount for it. And again, everything mates with the M lock hardware on the frame. So with all of these components in mind, the last thing we need to look at is what type of bag. This is actually the hardest part in my experience and why I had to go down the route of bag design. So this is actually my original man pack bag. There's actually some salt still here that I can't remove, but I'm going to be sending this one to Isaac. This is the uh, PRC-117 golf pouch from High Ground Gear. Plenty of molly on it, and it will accommodate this rig, I think, uh, based on some just sizing I'm eyeballing here. And then in terms of the battery compartment and housing the mic, we're going to take the uh, 511 6x6 admin pouch, also readily available, and put the battery, hand mic, and probably something like the USB cable for uh, the DigiRig interface. So plenty of room here. The only thing I don't like about this design is that we're going to have to route the uh, power cable through the external side into this bag, and that's part of the reason why I designed this guy. And uh, again, I only have two of these for myself, the prototype and the original one, and they're both in my twin 8570D man packs. And as you can see, uh, there is no uh, cables coming from the outside. I designed it so that there is a cable pass-through or three pass-throughs on the inside and we're able to keep everything neatly dressed. Uh, I also do have a top cap to protect the radio from from damage, but basically you can kind of see that this man pack build right down to the digi rig is pretty close to what we're building with the G90. All right, the first step is pretty simple. All we had to do was remove the original factory hardware. There's not much in the way of protection with this little guy here. As you can see here, the frame from Armor Lock actually does a very good job of protecting all of the knobs and dials. I have dropped mine before on the 857 and everything has been fine. And then again, the nice thing about the Armor Lock frames, even though it seems like they're a bit tall, you can really see how much room you have here to access the components, but also to protect all of the components along with a sufficient bend radius so you don't compromise any of the cables. And as you can see, we are probably about an inch short of comparison-wise to the 857D, but the bag, at least the PRC-117 golf bag and my bag, are actually going to be at the right height for operation. So I'm going to put on a few more components here, namely the um, relocation mounts for the coax run, and then also the power. So let's take a look at how the coax is mounted. As you'll notice, there is no contact with the surface. None of the components are compromised in any way. I do like these 90 degree elbows. I use these on all my mat packs, but there's even enough room for a straight connector. And then I like to go to BNC, so I have a 12 inch run of the MPD Digital. This is what I use on all of my larger man packs. And I always like to dress the coax on this side and mount the relocation hardware on the other side. So no Velcro is needed to dress this particular bit. And then for added protection, I do like to add a dust cap to the top. 
let's take a look at the plan for the power system. So we do have a two pin connector here on the back. I'm not familiar with that connector style. And uh, they give us a set of bare leads and the standard that I like to adopt and most people do in amateur radio is Anderson power poles. So I do have some gear for that. Again, I do recommend that people take a look at a video that I'm gonna put on the screen here because this was one of the first investments in tools that I made was learning to crimp on my own power poles. I've used the heck out of it. So a few things to note here. I found that the uh, factory connector is actually really cheaply made. There's actually a lot of play here that you can't see. So I plan to probably get some heat shrink and put that over the top there to pr provide some protection and also keep the cables together. And uh, the way that I like to have my run is there's the connector and I'm using the Armor Lock M app mount here. I've done a video on this one as well. And we'll basically create a pigtail that goes from this location down to the bottom. So I'm actually gonna cut this wire at the right length. Uh, there is a single fuse on the positive side. I'm gonna actually leave this one to go on this side going to the battery. And since I don't have a pass through for the battery compartment, uh, I can't do a run into the bag like I would normally do for my packs. So we're basically going to run the wire up the second lead, out the side, and into the 511 6x6 admin pouch. So I like to plan where I'm going to put all of the hardware. I'm very deliberate with all of the mounting options. All right, guys, let's take a look at what I've done in terms of power. And this is the one step that required some tools, but I made some investments in these tools about four years ago when I first got started. So right off the bat, I have to tell you, I am not impressed with the lack of quality and the cheap connector that Zygu provided. The cables very much wiggled. So to address that, what I did was I cut the leads off of the factory uh, wire. I don't know if it's under gauged, uh, especially since we're only gonna be pulling up to eight amps, but not a fan of this wire. Um, not a fan that it's not zipped together. But either way, I cut it down to basically build a small pigtail. And then for security, I put a little bit of heat shrink that I had on hand, plus a large one on the top. So this is a much more secure fit. And the pigtail is just long enough to go to the MAP hardware on the armor lock frame here. So here's a shot of what it looks like. And I have a very specific way I like to dress my cables. So not a whole lot of strain relief and nothing for it to get snagged on. And the cool thing, when using the MAP is that you have the ability to really just mate with this piece here. So that's step number one. Uh, I had some 14 gauge zip tie from PowerWorks and I decided to use it for the next portion of this build. Now this is way over gauged, especially for the eight amps we're gonna pull on the top end here, but I did the same thing. I basically cut the wire that I needed for this length and uh, we're just gonna go ahead and mate this guy. Okay, so we have that mated in place, and since I don't have the cable paths through like I have in my normal TTP man pack, the cable's gonna have to come up and then go through the bag, run outside the outside, and then go into the bag here on the front. So I've cut it just a little bit long so that I can dress it up. Uh, one tip here, if you are gonna use heat shrink, make sure you put it on first, and I just use this to keep it together. And unlike the cables that Zygu used, I like the zip cord because it keeps them together and then where I cut these two pieces down so I can uh, put the uh, connectors and then put the housing on, uh, I just have that little bit of heat shrink to keep it together. So this is what we're looking at here and then we're going to power it with the BioWino. Now I haven't used inline fuses in a while, it's never been a problem for my style of operation. Uh, if it is for you, what I usually get is the uh, inline fuses from the auto parts store, like a little jumper, and I'll put Anderson power poles on both sides, and then you can put whatever ATO or ATC fuse you need. Now, in terms of gear, I'm a big fan of the right tool for the job, and uh, this is really an investment that I consider you guys doing if you're going to be uh, doing work like this. So I basically like to use the housings and all of the connectors for Anderson power poles from PowerWorks. Uh, early on, I made a mistake of buying the stuff on China or Amazon from China, and they were a nightmare. And I tend to over gauge my stuff, and I'll use either the 30 or 45 amp connector. So these are pricey, but well worth it. Along with that, when I strip my wires, I invested in a pair of auto strippers about four years ago, and I get a perfect cut every time, and don't worry about any strands ever getting sheared off. 
So another valuable tool. And then I can't underestimate the power and flexibility of having a crimper that has the Anderson power pole dies for 15 amp, 30 amp, and 45. It makes it super easy to crimp it. So next up, we're gonna go ahead and uh, cut this down and plug it in, and then we're gonna power it on for the very first time. Before we put this in the bag, I wanna show you a few more things that I've done. The MAP hardware is nice because it has two pass-throughs for cable ties, so we have both housings secured. I also have roll pins on each of the housings. And then I've never done this before, but I had some quarter inch tubing from a project I'm doing on the Jeep for comms and decided to protect it here and then zip tie it to the frame. So very little movement. So the piece that will now go outside will have flex tubing to help protect it. So we'll see how this works in practice, but I think it's gonna be a winner. This is the nice thing about doing a man pack build almost two years uh, in the future. Uh, there are a few other things I would have done differently. I wish I had a little bit more a wider shrink wrap or shrink tubing for this area of the housing or the little boots that they have with the Anderson power poles. I don't have that, so this is the best I can do with the gear that I have. All right guys, so for this video, we are at a good stopping point. I really just needed to be able to power on this rig and I wanted to be able to do it in a way that gave me all the information I needed on whether this would work for a man pack. Now, it's not ideal, but at least all of the components here right down to the radio are still readily available. Uh, as you can see, the PRC-117 golf pouch has a little bit of play and we have to run the power outside, but I've done my best to protect power all along this system here. Let's go ahead and actually power it on for the first time. And there we go. So next steps for me is basically to go ahead and uh, up, update the firmware on this thing to the latest and greatest. I also have to ramp up on how to use this radio. I also want to see how the heat is going to be a problem. Um, if it is, what I plan to do is use the zippered compartment on the side of the PRC-117 golf pouch, if I can open it, and look into whether venting is going to be enough for our needs. Again, the goal here is targeted short comma windows, but uh, this should be interesting. I'm not going to walk you guys through the digital portion of mounting the hardware on here, mostly because I'm not ready to go there yet. I'm very much taking you through the experience. This was the first time that I built this. Uh, if there are adjustments, we'll discuss that in a future video. A uh, big shout out to Isaac from T-Rex Arms for agreeing to do this with me. There's still a lot of work ahead, probably three more videos, even before we do that contact. But I want to share with you everything that I'm learning about the G90, about this man pack build, and about that exercise. For the Buy Me a Coffee folks, thank you so much for your support. Uh, feel free to ask me all the questions you have about the G90 in our next private member stream. Uh, that's the last Tuesday of this month, so it should be fun. Uh, we'll definitely have at least two or three weeks of experience under my belt by then. With that said, guys, I'm the Tech Prepper. Be strong, be safe, and be prepared.